Wee. I read Atomic Habits. I bought the book online. I read through all of it, not just once, I read it twice. I've written down what I've learned and what benefited me the best. And I'm going to do all and tell you all of that. Right, I've done all of this. I'm going to tell you everything I've learned so you don't have to buy the book. Because I do know that that's a big deterrent from people wanting to read. And that's buying books because, you know, 10, 20 quid's not too much. But when you have like six books you want to read, Atomic Hammett's, where the superior man, Wabi Sabi, rich dad, poor dad, the psychological, uh, the psychology behind business. There are loads of loads of really good beneficial books out there. And when you want to buy them all, it comes quite pricey. So I read Atomic Habits, so you don't have to. Although I still do recommend buying the book because like just having the book would be very helpful. <laughs> My name is Wada and I hope other young men like me take back control of their lives. Okay, I'm gonna take off my glasses, but first things first, how are you? I hope things have been good, and I hope you've been alright. So yes, I read the book Atomic Habits. I learned a lot from it. It's a really good book. I think it's a very popular book that a lot of people know about. Like Atomic Habits, Where the Superior Man, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. These are all very popular books and a lot of people want to read. So I'm going to basically tell you everything I've learned, the most beneficial things that I've learned from Atomic Habits, and I'm going to put it down in bullet point form so it's easy for you to understand. First one is habits shape your identity. What your actions that you do are directly related to your identity. So the habits that you are doing, they align your identity. They make your identity. So what you do is your habit basically equals the identity that you believe you are. For example, it's quite hard to understand. So an example would be best if I smoked, which I used to. I used to be a heavy smoker, which obviously I've quit all of that now. But going back a couple years ago, I used to be a heavy smoker. When I would smoke uh, cigarettes every day, I identified as a smoker because my habit, my habit was I used to smoke. So I identified as a smoker. Same goes on the opposite. I now exercise regularly and daily. So I identify as a healthy person who exercises a lot. Now to change our identity, we need to change our habits first, since our habits shape our identity. James Clear, who is the author of the book, clearly states that the best way to change your identity is to focus on the habits. Start small with small good habits and then gradually get bigger with bigger, better habits. Another really, really good concept that's in the book is the four steps to changing a habit, to actually changing a habit to something else, because you cannot kill a habit. You can only replace it. Now, the first two of this four steps is the problems, like the problem that you're dealing with this, this bad habit. And the last two steps is the solution. So if we start with the first two, cue and craving. The cue is basically a trigger that triggers your brain to do a certain type of behavior. For example, when you walk into a dark room or when you get to your break on your work break and you always tend to have a cigarette at around this point. Now the craving would be the motivation behind this, the motivation behind the habit. So if you walk into a dark room, the motivation is to be able to see. Or if you're getting to your break, you always have a cigarette at this point. The motivation behind it is so you can feel relaxed for the rest of your shift. The last two is the solution phase, which is response and reward. Now response is the action that we do in response to what we are currently feeling. So if you walk into a dark room, your craving is to be able to see, your response is you flip the switch. Or with the smoking example, when you're on your break, you get the craving to have a smoke, you don't have a cigarette. You tell yourself no, you know that this is when you get your craving and you don't have a cigarette instead. And then the reward, the satisfaction. So when you walk into a dark room, you turn on the switch because you're craving to see, and then you're satisfied because you're able to see. 
or with the smoking example, you're satisfied because you are aiming to quit. Your satisfaction is that, okay, I just, I just told myself I wasn't going to smoke and I did it. I feel really good. I feel really good about it. That's your satisfaction from it. That's the reward. But it's still quite hard. It's still very hard to do the good habits and to stop doing the bad habits. And there are some things that you can do to do the good habits and to stop doing the bad habits. Now, James Clear puts it into sort of four kind of brackets to be able to do a habit more or to do a habit less. Visibility, attractiveness, difficulty, and satisfaction. Now, that's kind of like mumble jumble. That's just kind of words to you. So I'll put it into example. Say for example, a good habit. You want to start going to the gym more. Visibility. Make it obvious. Put your gym bag right by the door when you leave the house. Attractiveness. Listen to your favorite music whilst you're in the gym. So you can't, when you get to the gym, you're like, oh yeah, I can listen to my favorite music or go with like a gym buddy, so you're like, oh, I get to spend time with this guy. Difficulty. Start your day with a really easy 10 minute walk. Not even a run, just a 10 minute walk. When you wake up, go outside, go for a 10 minute walk, gets you kind of in the active mood. It's the easiest thing about like being more healthy, exercising more and going to the gym. It's the easiest thing. It's super easy, you just go on a 10 minute walk. And then satisfaction, write down the progress that you're making or record the progress that you're making. Whether it be in the gym, your strength is increasing, your weight is going down, write it down, track your progress. It becomes really satisfying when you can see the progress that you're making. Literally today, I was just at the gym and I just took a couple, of course, I took a couple posing photos. Obviously, I won't disclose them because I will get demonetized. But I was looking at um, my progress now compared to like over two months ago now, like two, three months ago. Oh, beautiful and i'll do example with bad habits i'll do smoking for example or you can do like with smoking like cigarettes or vapes they're basically the same thing visibility make them invisible just make it where you cannot see them you just can't see them anywhere hide them it makes it kind of harder to like actually do it so like instead of putting your vape in your pocket in your coat pocket put it in your bag and your bag is away from you when you're on work Attractiveness. Think about how unattractive it would be that your breath would be after having a cigarette or after vaping. And by the way, don't give me like, oh, but my, my vape is cotton candy flavor. My vape is fucking strawberries. No, your breath does not smell like strawberries afterwards. It smells like a vape. We know. I can tell when someone comes into like my workplace and they've been vaping because I can smell the shit. Yes, it smells like strawberries, but it doesn't smell like real strawberries. It smells like a vape. You can tell. It's so easy to tell. It doesn't smell nice. Like, imagine how bad your breath is going to stink, especially with cigarettes. Cigarettes are slightly worse. Difficulty. Set a 25 minute sort of hard work thing you're going to do. So for example, if you, oh, I really could do a vape right now. You know what? I'm gonna do 20 push-ups. I'm gonna do 20 push-ups right now instead. It's funny how, even though you don't feel like it, even though you don't feel like doing those 20 push-ups, when you do those 20 push-ups, even despite the fact that you don't feel like it, right? You do them, you kind of don't wanna vape anymore. You don't wanna smoke anymore. It like kind of kills your craving when you do something slightly harder. I don't know why. I can't really explain the science behind it, but I can tell you from experience firsthand that it does work. It's really weird. And then satisfaction. Just imagine how unsatisfying it would be that you're trying so hard to stop, to quit, and then you give in and you're like, oh, fuck. What I absolutely love, um, I'm going to just read it out loud. It's a quote from James Clear, so the author of the book. A habit needs to be enjoyable for it to last. What is instantly rewarded is done again and what is instantly punished is ditched. To get a habit to stick, you need to feel instantly successful, even if it's in a small way. I think that is really like genuinely like so true because when you even get like a tiny bit, of, like the smallest bit of like reward or satisfaction from a good habit, man, it makes you want to do it more. And when you're sort of like got it in the back of your mind, like, oh fuck, I'm, oh God, Dude, I gotta literally punish myself from like giving into a smoke. I gotta like do another 20 push-ups. It makes you really not want to do like cigarettes or vapes 
Obviously, this can work with any bad habit that you're trying to quit. One big thing that is talked about as well is walk slowly, but not backwards. Now, it is very easy to, do, to get discouraged from your goals, especially when you're trying to change and do good habits and you're not seeing an immediate like reaction or like reward from it. You're trying to change and do good habits, but you're not seeing instant results. It can be very discouraging. But if you keep taking small steps, walking slowly, you will eventually meet your goals, no matter what. Think about it, right? You're trying to lose weight and you're sort of thinking like, oh, I've got to go to the gym. It's going to be two hours. I really don't want to go. Oh, I'm not going to go. That's taking a step backwards. However, if you instead think, oh man, I'm going to the gym today. Oh, it's two hours. It's going to be so long. I don't want to go. But I'm going to go anyway, but I'm only going to do 30 minutes. That's still taking a step forwards. You're still losing weight. It's a small step, but it's still a step in the right direction instead of a step backwards. And in the long run, it would be hugely beneficial. There is another thing that I actually really like from James Clear, and that is the two minute roll. Roll. The two minute rule. If you can do an action or an activity in two minutes or less, do it now. Don't delay. Don't procrastinate. Do it now. The two minute rule. Literally ask yourself, can I do this in less than two minutes? Yeah. All right. I'm gonna do it now. No hesitation. Just straight into it. This rule was actually created by David Allen in the book, Getting Things Done. But James Clear still recommends it in Atomic Habits, especially when you're trying to build new habits, especially like small ones, just small little good habits. For example, folding your clothes instead of dumping it on your chair and then getting up and then dumping it on your bed to sit in your chair. That's something I used to do a lot. Like my bed's there, my chair's here. I've remodeled my room. So I've got no distractions in my room now. As you can tell, it's just a white wall. But I used to like get up from my bed and then go to sit on my chair and then move all the clothes that were unmade, like just kind of a mess and move it onto my bed. So if you look at that pile of clothes, you know what? It's going to take me less than two minutes. May as well just fold them, do it now. The two minute rule, it's really beneficial when starting new good habits that are even small as minute as making your clothes. And the last really important point that I've kind of like put in this video, I will probably do another video about this because there is so much, but the, this is like the things that related with me the most and with the most beneficial. And that is the law of least effort. Now we, there is a universal law in biological human terms that we will always stimulate or kind of choose the path that has the least effort this is a law that is known it's universal and it is a huge problem for building new habits it's a huge implication for trying to change and do better habits so a way around it is change your environment so make your environment so where you're trying to do the good habit, make it as easy as possible. So say you're trying to drink more water, put more water in your room, put more water bottles in your room. So it's easier to do. If it's easier to do, you're probably most likely going to do it. And the same thing happens with bad habits, increase the friction for bad habits. So to do the bad habits is harder. So say for example, you're trying to revise, make it so where your room has no technology, nothing to distract you. So the only thing you can do is revise. So it's really hard to go on your phone because it's not in the same room, but it's very easy to sit and study because it's the only thing you have in your room. It's either that or you sit and do literally nothing, which obviously you won't because you do not want to be bored. The human mind will always choose something to do instead of being bored. Whew, God damn, that was a lot of information in one single video. I probably will do another video about this on like other books that I've read because, well, obviously some people can't afford it. I used to be in a really like bad position where I couldn't afford any books. So I'm very lucky that I can now and I want to be able to share my experiences with you guys so you can learn as well. So this was there was a bunch of information in this video. So if you want to pause it, save it and write down notes, please feel free 100% do that because there is a lot of information and I hope you've been good I hope this video helped you out and I would be really appreciative if you clicked on the one that's going to pop up here because this video could genuinely help change your life how these two and a half hours changed my life 
And if you're not subscribed to me, there's a high chance you will never ever find this channel again. So subscribe if you want to see more content like this. Stay consistent and do the best you can. You know what time it is? Oh yeah, something from a kiss. Mwah.